I thought I was sharing from the time I was explaining and then I think it is not shared at all. Hello? Is it visible now? Yes, ma'am, now it is visible. Okay, then. So today, I think last classes we had done about the parabolic profiles. Uh, this parabolic profiles we have done. Yeah, load balancing method with the parabolic profile we have done. Then now coming to the third type of solving the stresses, how calculating the stresses, we have the third type was the pressure line method. Okay, so Earlier we had done the stress method, then we have done the load balancing methods, and now this is the third one, which is your the pressure line method. Here, if we consider this beam, here if we consider this beam of suppose length L as said here, provided with a tendon, this is your tendon, but with an eccentricity okay this is the cg of the beam and this is your tendon placed here with an eccentricity e suppose the beam is lying on the ground that is the beam is not subject to any external loads here then obviously there will be no external bending moment on the beam so in the pressure line method what we do we recognize the existence of the following forces which are equal which is the P force which is the tension in the tendon and the C force which is the compressive force acting on the concrete. Stresses in concrete are produced entirely due to the C force. Okay, so this P, the tendon, when we pull this tendons, there will be tension on the tendons. So that is called your, this P force is here always present on the tendon. Okay, that is the P, wherever is your tendon, that is only your P line. Okay, and 
when you release this there will be some compressive forces developed here when you release this tendons so uh, then what happens there is a line which is your this compressive forces are acting here on a line which is your c line okay this is called to be c line okay so uh, basically here stresses which we will be considering okay are produced here entirely due to this c force that means a c line okay so you can see in the absence of any external bending moment the c force and the p force act at the same level that means now here in this particular figure if you see there is no external loading here at the top or at the bottom so here this is your tendon here so it is your tendon here so here is also your c p and c are coinciding to each other now when there is no external load the line of action of the p force is called the p line this already i told you the p line is nothing but the tendon line itself okay tendon line itself the line of action of the c force is called the c line or pressure line and that's why we call this to be okay the p line or c line method or the pressure line method or we also say it to be the strain concert method okay strain concert method here now suppose the beam is at a moment when we don't have any uh, external loading what happens suppose this is your beam and at the center this is a cg of the beam and here is your tendon suppose this is a um, how to show you suppose this is the beam this is the beam this is the uh, center line you can say and uh, this is also the tendon is also uh, concentrically placed here okay in this particular beam if you see the it is in the longitudinal centroidal axis your tendon is placed here in this case when you don't have any external loading also and there is no eccentricity what happens your uh, this thing your the c line which is your compression is going to act is going to act here only in the same p line uh, i cannot draw the straight this is your c line is also here that means they are coinciding to each other but suppose the beam is subjected to a moment then what happens your c line will be shifted from the p line by a distance a you can see here this is your center of your beam this one and now your p line is this that means the tendon is placed here this is your tendon this one is your tendon now when you have this tendon here what is happening when there is a moment this due to any external load suppose there is a moment there is a moment here then what happens in this particular method what happens your p line this p line is shift uh, no sorry the c line this one gets shifted from this p line earlier what was the happening here you can see here when there was no load and no moment then what happened this p line was only your c line both were coinciding to each other but here when you have a load and a moment what is happening your as soon as there is a moment your c line is getting shifted from the p line okay it will always get shifted from p line your c line will always get shifted from the p line and this shifting how you are going to calculate the shifting that how much uh, your c line has shifted that is by m by p this one okay that is the external moment this external moment divided by your pre stressing force and pre stressing force this is your pre stressing force and your pre stressing force is also equal to your c the compression force because you know your pre stressing force is what uh, when you give tension to the tendons the amount of force it is going to develop that is only the compression force so this is your shift of the c line from the p line you are going to find out how much it is shifted by m by p
okay so in other words we can say that the effect of the moment may be considered by shifting the c line by the distance m by p we will find out the effect of the moment this moment by this c line that means shifting of the c line from the p line okay now what is written here now corresponding to the new position of the c line and its eccentricity the stress distribution for concrete can be determined okay extreme stresses we know what our extreme stresses were what direct stress p by a and the stresses due to bending moment okay now here since we are going to always consider this c line we are not going to consider the tendon earlier in the stress method uh, in the uh, load balancing method we were considering what we were considering the p, p, p line that means the tendon we were considering the position of the tendon with the this thing cg of the beam but here in the strain concept method or the p line or c line method what you do here here we are considering everything uh, the effect of the moment we are considering by the shift of the c line so with respect to this c line we are going to calculate all the stresses or uh, okay so here this direct stress will be same p by a because of this the pre stressing force p or c you can say it is what direct is uniformly distributed to the entire beam so it is p by a p by a it is also can be written as c since we are now bothered about the c line so we have written it to be c which is equal to p actually the pre stressing force then we have a in this question in this uh, beam particularly what is there there is a moment due to this eccentricity you see here this is your p line this one this is your p line now once there is a load and a moment is developed now the effect of this moment is seen here by the shift of the c line from the p line this is a c line it has shifted from the p line with the distance a so now we are going to consider this c line with respect to the cg of the beam earlier with the what we used to do we used to consider the tendon with respect to the cg of the this thing for the eccentricity but now for the eccentricity also if you are going to check the eccentricity because due to that eccentricity you will have a moment which is your uh, it was uh, earlier in the stress methods we had pe by z okay which was pre stressing force into the eccentricity the, in the similar way p is our c here in this particular uh, strain concept method so it is c into e that means e is the eccentricity of the c line eccentricity of c line from the cg that means this this line okay so with respect to this we are going to calculate the stresses so here in this particular we have what c e by z okay and remember here here we have not used what uh, the stress due to the loadings which are created, developed due to the uh, stresses which are developed due to the bending moment uh, of the loads external loads why because here already we have calculated the stress which is because of this load there is a moment and this effect of the moment is seen here with the shift of the c line so this is this eccentricity will only show you your uh, stress due to the moment and the with the eccentricity okay together okay according to this method okay so this method is also called as your strength concept method this can be pressure line method p line method c line method or the strength concept method okay now once we do a problem we will understand see here in this particular question if you see now see here in this question what is now in this question if you see we if we solve this problem we will understand how to do your strength concept method a pre stress concrete beam of 400 into 600 mm in section has a span of 6 meter and is subjected to a udl of 16 kN per meter 
Okay, this was 400 into 600, including the self weight of the beam. This we know. The pre stressing tendon. Okay. I'll just share you the link uh, as soon as this ends, okay? And then we'll continue with the second class together now, okay? The meeting is going to end. So, what is happening? The pre stressing tendons, which are located along the longitudinal centroidal axis. Here, you see in the question what it is mentioned there, it is located along the longitudinal centroidal axis, provided an effective pre stressing force. Pre stressing force is 960 kilonewton. Determine the extreme stresses in concrete for mid span section. So, we have to find out the extreme stresses. Okay. Now, uh, in this particular question, you have this beam. Uh, it is at a longitudinal centroidal axis. That means at the center. Okay. At the center. So, this is your CG. I'll take the attendance in the second class. Okay, now as soon as this ends, we'll join the next meeting. And we'll continue with the second class. So, suppose this is your beam. And in this question, you say that your tendon is placed at longitudinally centroidal axis. So, here, so this is also the center of the uh, beam and also it is the pre stressing force here okay so this is the p line also this is the c line okay but it has an external load of 16 kilonewton per meter including the self weight of the beam it has this 16 kilonewton 16 kilonewton per meter okay so now we have what in this this p line is your uh, coinciding with the cg of the beam now for this external load there will be obviously a moment okay and that moment effect of that moment is given by shift of the c line from the p line we know and now this is your p line now when the load is acting here and there will be a moment developed what will happen there will be an eccentricity that means your c line is going to now uh, your C line is going to shift from this P line. When there was no load, the uh, C line was also coinciding with this P line now. But as soon as there is a load and there is a moment, what is happening? Your uh, C line, that is the compression line where the compressive forces are acting, is going to be changed. The uh, place of the C line is going to change. So that how you are going to calculate that, this one. M by P. So, M by P, if we do, we will get what? We will get our shift of the C line from the P line. But we will know that where it is shifting, uh, uh, top or bottom, your C line may go above the CG of the beam or below the CG of the beam with respect to which your signs are going to change. So, if we proceed, you see area, you know how to calculate area, you know Z, you know BD squared by 6. Moment, you know, it is 16 kilonewton per meter already given to the load. So, WL squared by 8 is your moment. Now, if we see, if we try to solve this question by the stress concept method, first of all, so that you get... Uh, to know like what was the difference between these two stress concept method and the strength concept method is that you see in the stress concept method what we used to do we used to directly find out the stresses at the mid span section here that is the direct stress and if there is a load we will have a stress due to the bending moment due to this loading so that was what there is no eccentricity also of the tendon this tendon particular so it is the direct stress plus minus your m by z this things already you know so this was your direct stress concept method directly you put your p values area you know moment you know z you know 
z you know so what happens you can find out your top stress and the